Hello YouTube. Today I wanted to do something a little different since I do plan to do a little more river and beach fossil hunting, uh, which I usually do using a sifter. So the sifter that I have looks like this. It's uh, basically wire mesh, PVC, and uh, some pool noodles and zip ties and paracord and what have you. And basically uh, you have an end that you tie to your belt or your pants and uh, just kind of trails behind you and you just take shovel full after shovel full of fossil material put it in the middle of this uh, you know mesh and, and look for fossils the problem is it's a little cumbersome the noodle tubes they like to wiggle a lot so it's kind of hard to get a good grip especially if you're in a river and you're fighting the current at the same time Additionally, uh, the zip ties have started to actually deteriorate, so right now this, this one's actually out of commission because the mesh is starting to fall out. And every time you're done, you have to flip the whole thing over in order to empty it, which gets kind of annoying. And lastly, I'd like to have a place to mount a GoPro or a camera so that I can get better footage for you guys. So, me being an engineer, I decided that I was going to reinvent the sifter and then try to come up with a better alternative that works for me. So what I'm going to do is I'll walk you through my crazy idea. It's just a prototype. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'll build it, I'll test it, and if you guys like it, you're more than welcome to copy it. So um, that's what this video will be about, and of course if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Alright, so far what I've done is I basically am salvaging my old sifter, so I took it apart. Uh, and I'm left with the frame, I still got the mesh. If you're wondering why it's wrapped with coil of paracord, it's because I hated pricking my fingers on little stubs left over. So I uh, made that as a little barrier. You still prick your fingers though. Um, so yeah, I salvaged the noodle tubes, the frame, uh, which I plan on reusing, and the mesh. And um, basically I'm going to go over what I'm thinking for my design here. I'm going to try to do this one-handed while holding the camera. Alright, so basically we have an outer frame that will have the little elbows connecting and this frame uh, is being used with a uh, three-quarter inch PVC and the reason it's black is because I spray painted it because I thought it would look cool and oh we'll see how that went anyway um, so the outer frame is your typical uh, this is two feet by two feet. And um, what I want to do is have an inner frame that uses half inch PVC. Sorry for the crude drawing. And basically have some kind of a pivot point so that the interior part can rotate so that this main frame will be the one with the noodle tubes and then the inner frame will be the actual frame where the sifting happens and there'll be like some kind of a peg or what I'm thinking is actually tying bungee cord that can wrap around and take it on and off and then when it's off you can tilt it however you want and have full rotation of this inner part so that you can dump the unwanted gravel and then reattach the bungee cord and start putting your material in there again. Additionally I found one of these nifty elbow uh, pieces um, three-quarter inch to a one-half inch threaded uh, piece that will be one of the, the corners so that I can take one of these 
half inch caps, drill a hole in here and add a one quarter threaded screw that would work on uh, tripod, tripod mounts for the cameras so that I could um, you know, add some kind of mounting system for either a GoPro or a regular camera. So for the pivot points I'm planning on trying to use uh, stainless steel hex bolts to provide that pivot point. We'll see how that works. So that's that's the general idea. It's kind of strange, I know, but uh, we'll we'll see if it works. All right. So what I'm doing now is measuring where I need to cut my half-inch PVC, and uh, I attached the noodles back on to to the frame just so that I could get a good measurement because we don't want the inner frame to have to get caught against the noodle tubes when it's pivoting. You want it to have a nice clean uh, flush area that it can easily pivot. So I'm going to use my great skills at eyeballing things. Let's see. I probably want to cut that somewhere about there. Ultra scientific. Alright, so I measured it out and uh, it just barely touches the noodle um, but I also didn't put these elbows all the way in. There's still a little space so it's probably going to be good enough. I might chop off just a, a centimeter or so of the pipe just to make sure but uh, we're almost there and once I get a proper measurement then I can make the rest of them the same size. Alright, and just in case you're wondering about how long I'm cutting these, it's just about 19 and a half inches. Alright, so once you get your four uh, pieces of half inch PVC cut down to sides, it's literally just a matter of attaching the elbows and making a square. So that is what I'm going to do next. Alright, as you can see now, I got my square complete. It fits really nicely in the middle. Uh, it has some space so that it doesn't make too much contact with the noodles. Alright, so my next step is going to be to mark the center and uh, drill a hole so that I can feed one of these hex bolts through. Uh, as the pivot point. So I'm going to measure the center of here and the inner one so that I have something to connect them. This is a three and a half inch stainless steel hex bolt but honestly a three inch might have actually worked instead but see what I can do. I also added in my new uh, elbow that has the, uh, the thread for the camera mount. This is one of my cats, Tora. She wanted to come help me, and by help me, distract me. I'm going to need those. Alrighty, so I've uh, drilled some holes and uh, put the bolts through, and now, check this out. It pivots! Hooray! So, imagine we're uh, sifting, and we're done with the material that's in there and we just want to get rid of it so we just dump it out. Now of course we're going to need a way to keep it from doing that when we want to sift but uh, I have a plan for that. So here's another angle of it. Um, I added another noodle tube on one end so uh, you can see how the pivoting works. i try to do this with one hand. So pretty simple. And you can tighten it uh, however you need. Uh, this seems to be working for me so far. Unfortunately, I'm not very accurate when it comes to drilling, so my drill holes weren't perfectly perpendicular. There's just a little bit of an angle, but I still get the pivoting motion that I want out of it, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And, of course, this is just a prototype anyway. Alright, so the uh, next thing I need to do is drill two holes to feed some uh, bungee cord through 
So I've got this uh, bungee cord, it's uh, stretchy, and that'll stretch over a bolt that I'm going to screw in over here. I'm going to do that on both sides so that it'll prevent this from pivoting unless I detach it. So that's what I've got to do next, and I'll uh, let you guys see what it looks like when that's done. Alright, check it out. So, um, my camera would focus. So this is how I prevent it from pivoting when I don't want it to. Now, I haven't done the other side yet, but with the other side it'll obviously be a little sturdier. And it'll have a little bit of give, but I don't think it's going to be enough to make any issues. And then, of course, once I push, put the mesh screening in, then uh, we'll pretty much have a ready-to-go sifter. And, uh, of course, this is, this is bungee cord, so it's stretchy, and you can easily just unstretch it from there, and now you can one-handed pivot again. Hooray! So, I thought that was a pretty uh, simple design. I think it's going to work nicely. And uh, over here is a GoPro mount, and basically what I used for that was the um, little cap, uh, half inch cap with threads. And then in there I put one of these uh, quarter, quarter inch threaded um, screws. So that's what the GoPro tripod mount is connected to. Alrighty, so I got uh, both sides complete. And as you can see, I'm applying pressure, and this thing is not pivoting at all. I think it'll be able to handle a decent couple of shovelfuls of uh, dirt. And, um, and then I would just detach the two sides of uh, the bungee cord, and then I can just pivot it and dump out whatever's in the middle. And refill it with new pay dirt. Well, I was getting ready to cut my mesh to size, but distractions happened. I'm surrounded by kitties. Alright, so as you can see here, uh, we got the mesh cut to size. Unfortunately, I, I don't know what I did with my zip ties. I either used them all already, or I just don't know where I put them when I moved to the new house. So I'm going to use some paracord instead. Uh, paracord is a great material, it's pretty high strength, it doesn't rot or get mildewy, and so I think for our purposes, intertwining it between the mesh and the PVC should work just fine. And Tora likes it too. Alright, so I finished up the sifter, um, wrapped it up with the paracord. Seems to be pretty sturdy, I mean, I think that's going to hold material pretty well. Um, I can you know, remove the bungee cords. And then of course have it rotate. Um, all I need to do now is just attach the yellow noodle tubes back to the ends over here. What do you think Tora? We finished it. Alright, so here's the final product. Um, ended up putting the mesh on using paracord and looks like it's going to hold up pretty nicely. And uh, I'm hoping to take this thing out this weekend to the Peace River and give it a try. And uh, hopefully it'll hold up nicely and we'll see what goodies we can find. Uh, if you have any questions on the build process, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I know this wasn't a actual step-by-step -step tutorial, but I still did go through all the steps that I took to get to this point. So um, if you need any clarification on anything, let me know. Alright, till next time, take care. Thanks for watching.